सौचक वन प्रेम सुमापति महादेव की जय वृंदावन बिहारी लाल की जय तर सोलस्तान माई जय फ्रेंड्स आज यू बिगिन दिस ब्यूटीफुल नाइट वंस मोर वंडरफुल यज्ञ आज यू पे सलूटेशन टू द डिवाइन लॉर्ड इन द फॉर्म ऑफ भगवान श्री गोविंद we worship none other than prabhu shankar bolenath and as we begin this night at this time we will wave the sacred light we will join in beautiful aarti to the deities of the heavens all together we sing om shri ganeshaya namaha om shri saraswatiya namaha om shri gurubhyo namo namaha ब्रह्मा विष्णु सदा शिव हरदंगे धारा ब्रह्मा विष्णु सदा शिव हरदंगे धारा जय शिव कारा शिव ओम कारा जय शिव ओम कारा बाबा हर शिव ओम कारा स्वामी जी की आरती जो कोई जनगावे 
Tonight, my dear friends, we are worshipping the Guru. Today is called Guru Bar. We are worshipping Mahadev Prabhu Shankar Bolinar. By chanting his name again and again, we pray for happiness, for peace, for success, and for the divinity of the heavens. <laughs> As we begin this beautiful night, my dear friends, once more we say Aapko Swagatam Namaskar Karata Hu Sablok To all bhaktas, to all devotees who are healing from far and yet to join with us We specially welcome you to this beautiful second night of our five nights of Bhakti Gyan Yagya Tonight as we begin, once more to our Gurudev the Guru of the Om Shanti Ashram, a Guru in this wonderful village. Guru Devi says, Swagatam Namaskar. A welcome to you on behalf of the members of the home and the entire family and all of us who are here. Tonight also to all the other pundits and the sadhus who are here, we say, Swagatam Namaskar. To all devotees who have come to join with us, special blessings to each and everyone. To the members of the Silesca Gandharvas, we say, Bhagwan's blessings to them, Mahadev Prabhu Shankar Bolinath's blessings. And to all of yours, once more tonight, to all those who are locked on via Facebook, we say a special welcome to each and every one. Without further ado, as we begin this night, let us sit upright. Let us close our eyes. Let us contemplate on Mahadev, Prabhu Shambhu, Prabhu Bholenath. We say, Lord, Apu Barambad Pranam Namaskar Kartahu, Lord. As humble bhaktas and devotees, we have taken this beautiful moment to come together, united with our love, with our devotion to invoke your strength and your energy. And while we pray with a pure heart, we join in Om God.
ವಕ್ರತುಂಗ ಮಹಾಕಾಯ ಸೂರ್ಯಕೋತಿ ಸಮಪ್ರಭಾ ನಿರ್ವಿಘ್ನ ಕುರು ಮೇ ದೇವಾಕಾದೇಶು ಸರ್ವದಿ ಸರ್ವೂತು ದುರ್ಗಾರೂಪೇನ ಸಂಸ್ಥಿ ನಮಸ್ತ 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 ನಮೋ ನಮಃ ಯಾ ದೇವಿ ಸರ್ವೂತು ಲಕ್ಷ್ಮೀರೂಪೇನ ಸಂಸ್ಥಿ ನಮಸ್ತ 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 ಯಾವಿ ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ರೂಪೇಣ ಸಂಸ್ಥಿ ನಮಸ್ತ 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 ನಮೋ ನಮಃ ಜಯ ಗಿರಿಜಾಪತಿ ದೀನ ದಯಾಲ ಸಂತನ ಪ್ರತಿಪಾಲ ಹರ ಹರ ಜಯ ಶಂಕರ ಓಂ ಹರ 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 ಜಯ ಶಂಕರ ಓಂ ಹರ ಹರ As we pray to Lord Shiva tonight, we have sacrificed our time, our efforts and our energy. And while we begin this night with devotion to Mahadev, Lord Shambhu, Lord Shankar, Prabhu Shiva, we are humble devotees have eradicated all the negativities of the world to sit here, to listen, to be a part of Yajna. And while we will pray with a pure heart, we offer ourselves at your lotus like feet lord you are known as mahadev the great one you are known as shambhu kailash nata the father of the entire cosmos and while we will pray to you tonight lord we will chant your most powerful mantra panchakshara mantra om namaha shivaya ತ್ರಂಬಕ ಯಜಾಮಹೆ ಸುಗಂಧಿ ಪುಷ್ಟಿ ವಾರ್ಧನ ಪೂರ್ವಾರುಕಮೀವ ಬಂಧನ ಮೃತ್ಯೋರ್ಮುಕ್ಷೀಯ ಮಾಮೃತ ಓ ಪ್ಯಾರಿ ಪ್ಯಾರ ಸಿ ವಿಲ್ ಲವ್ ತ್ರಂಬಕ ಯಜಾಮಹೆ ಸುಗಂಧಿ ಪುಷ್ಟಿ ವಾರ್ಧನ ಪೂರ್ವಾರುಕಮೀವ ಬಂಧನ ಮೃತ್ಯೋರ್ಮುಕ್ಷೀಯ ಮಾಮೃತ ಓಸ್ ವಿ ಬಿಗಿನ್ ದಿಸ್ ನೈಟ್ ಮೈ ಫ್ರೆಂಡ್ಸ್ It is said Prabhu Shankar Bolenath had taken the avatar. Lord Shiva has taken many avatars. Tonight we will worship that beautiful one that is called Lord Hanuman ji. For we will chant his name, we will chant the 40 verses of Shri Hanuman Chalisa. We will invite the energies of Bajranga Bali to fill our hearts, to fill our entire being physically, internally, externally. Surround us Lord. Whoever we are at this time to the devotees who are tuned in in their homes and in their vehicles, we praise Mahavir Swami tonight. 
जमाना मुकुर सुधा वरना रघुवर विमल जसु जो दायक पल चा बुद्धि तनु जान के सुमिरा पवन कुमार बल बुद्धि विद्या दे कलेश विकार राम सिया राम सिया राम जय जय राम सिया राम सिया राम जय जय राम राम सिया पवन सुतना महावीर विकरम बजरंग कुमति निवार सुमति के संगी गजन वरण विराज सुवेशा कानन कुंदल कुंचित के साथ जन 
पर भानु मिलो ताही मधुर पल जानु प्रभु मोत्र का मिल मुखमाई जल दिलांगी गए चर जनाई दुर्गम का जगत के जेते सुगमानु ग्राहत मरे दे दे राम द्वारे राम द्वारे तुम्हारे कवारे उतना आज्ञा बिन पैसारे सब सिकल है तुम्हारे शरणा तुम्हारे शक्का Yeah, no. 
हनुमान की जय बजरंग बली की जय अज बी गिन दिस ब्यूटिफुल नाइट माई डियर फ्रेंड्स वंस मो विस स्वागतम नमस्कार न स्पर्श जय सीताराम टू ऑल दिवोटीज who have come to join with us on this the second night of our five nights of bhakti gyan yagya last night we spoke of the birth of that divine son of prabhu shankar bolenath and the divine mother parvati mata while we know that there are two children and two sons of and they will say but baba who is that because even today many people don't know that that child's name is called kartikeya tonight we will continue with that message because kartikeya is a very most powerful and prominent deity especially in kailash parvat but before we join in the message today is called guruvar it is a day dedicated to all the gurus of the world and lord shiva says that he is the maha guru that is why it says manasa bhajale guru charanam it is said by worship of the gurus and the preceptors and the the holy ones we can attain a blessing that none can ever touch the guru shishya relationship the godfather the godchild relationship is a powerful one tonight to all those who are here and to all those who are tuned in take a moment and think of your guru think of your guru visualize him in your mind whether he is alive or is not alive it is said when he gave you that mantra he then became connected to you that relationship between godfather and godchild was then built as we think of the godfather and we pray for that blessing we join in a chant to mahadev Lord Shiva the embodiment of peace every day in our lives we are fighting for peace a peace of mind understanding communication in our home in our families in our relationships in marriages in our jobs and tonight we say salutations to you Lord Shiva while we invite everybody to sing along take part all together namo 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 Shiva Shankara Parameshwara Shashi Shekara Ya Namah Prem Sushma Pati Mahadeva Ki Jai Shishi. <laughs> 
सबको प्यारी एक बार शिव शंकर परमेश्वरा शशि शेखराय नमो कैलाश पर शिव शंकर भगवान की जय सो टू दोज हु वर अ फॉलोअर विद अस लास्ट नाइट इन आर मैसेज Every year we speak about the presiding deity. Last year the presiding deity of the year was Let me see how many people listen last year. <laughs> the presiding deity of last year was Anybody? Lord Hanuman ji. Why was it Lord Hanuman ji? Anybody know? How did we come up with that? Magic The elders, how did we know that last year was about Lord Hanuman Ji? Vedic astrology is very powerful. It is said Ravana, his birth and his lineage came straight down from the Mayans. The Mayans were the ones who would have showed the world so many different types and forms of astrology. To those who've ever been to Bharat Desh and India, if you go to Jaipur, there's a spot in Jaipur where you can go. and you will see all the signs of astrology astrological signs are there you will go as, as though it's a museum you can enter when you enter you will see this huge field and you will see some at some parts of the field you will see rocks just lying there some are just standing in a weird position some are you will be walking and you will see the whole dog on the ground itself and all that is carved and made with marble as well and you have, you will ask yourself but what is really going on here You will see certain signs on walls, and you will question as to what is this? Why have they done this to the place? It doesn't look like anything normal. You see a hole here. You see a mountain there. We see some rocks on one corner. You'll be like, what is this? And when you go and you ask or you even look, you will see with everything that is there is an it is an astrological site. You go and you stand over this huge hole that you're seeing, but although it's a hole, it has been carved spherical. And when you look into the hole, you will see markings. in this sphere and while the sun is rising or the sun is about to set wherever the sun shines into the hole itself due to the reflection of the sun you will see dates and you will see times and you will see every every little scratch that you see there means something astrologically i don't know probably gurudev you would know i'm sure of this 
when I was growing up, my grandmother had this little something made out of a, a piece of aluminum or something, right? And you could turn it, and it, whenever you turn it, it was just like two sheets or three sheets just pinned together. And there were markings of the day and the month and the year. Do you know that? Do you remember it? It is as though just like that. We didn't know. I was small and I would see this and just play with it, spin it in a circle and play with it. But it had everything. You just had to turn it accordingly. It was like a calendar. According to astrological signs in Maradesh, you see a piece of rock simply just sticking out in the air like this and you say, but what is this? And then the tour guides will say, step back. Look, where the sun is shining, look down now. Move away, look on the ground. They've created lines. You will see a clock there. You will see the time there. The elders would have gone into the gardens long ago and they could tell you when it's 12 o'clock. They could tell you when it's about 3 o'clock. You might say, but 12, that means it's not right above your head. But they could tell you, no, it's like 3 o'clock. And they will simply sometimes put their hand in the air and they will look down on the ground and give you different directions and tell you what time it is. These markings are there to symbolize astrological signs. Last year was a year for Panch Mukhi Hanumanji. Why? Because last year was the year 2021. Every year that goes by, there's a presiding deity that will rule for the year. If you know numerology that is connected to astrology, Numerology is about adding the numbers. So last year, 2021, you add the numbers together, what are you going to get? Two, and two is four, and one is five. Which deity has the five pieces? Panch Mukhi Hanumanji. This year, 2022, you add all the numbers together, what are you going to get? Six. Which is, what is the presiding deity of this year? Well, we mentioned it last night. Who is the presiding deity? Which God took birth with the energy and the blessing of six devis? Kritikamaya? None other than Kartikeya. This year is dedicated to Kartikeya. What about this year is dedicated to Kartikeya? What will happen? What does it mean when Kartikeya rules over this year? Last year when Lord Hanumanji ruled, it is said that because the power, the most mightiest and powerful deity was ruling, it was a year where we needed strength to stand up and fight back. Things would have happened in the world, and yes, we are still going through the pandemic. But it would have meant and symbolized inner and spiritual energy, divine energy. When we worship Kartikeya, what does it mean? Let us start with this beautiful one to Kartikeya. The Katha begins tonight. It is said in Kailash Paravat, Prabhu Shankar Bhulenath, Lord Shiva, Parvati Mata, Lord Ganapati, Kartikeya. They are seated or they are seated together in Kailash Paravat. And while they are sitting, they are simply speaking to one another about life, about everything and anything that they could think about. And this is what is about to happen. Subramanyam, Subramanyam, Sanmukhanata, Subramanyam. Subramanyam, Subramanyam, Sanmukhanata, Subramanyam. All together. Subramanyam, Subramanyam, Sanmukhanata, Subramanyam. Subramanyam, Subramanyam, Sanmukhanata, Subramanyam. Shiva 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 Supramanyam Hara 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 Supramanyam Shiva 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 Supramanyam Okay Gata Hara 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 Supramanyam Shiva 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 Supramanyam Hara 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 Supramanyam Shiva 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 Supramanyam Subramanyam, Subramanyam, Sanmukhanata, Subramanyam, 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 Sanmukhanata, Subramanyam. Finally, Subramanyam, Subramanyam, Sanmukhanata, Subramanyam, 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 Sanmukhanata, Subramanyam, 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 Sanmukhanata, Subramanyam, 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 Sanmukhanata. 
Prem Susumapati Mahadeva ki jai. The katha goes like this way in Kailash Paravad, Lord Shiva, Parvati Mahata, Kartikeya, and the son Lord Ganapati, they are seated together. That is called the Shiva Parivar. Parivar means family. The Shiva family sits there. When you see that picture next time and you see the four of them sitting, don't ask then who is this? It is the Shiva Parivar family. It is the family or the picture of the entire family of Lord Shiva. While sitting together with not much but they're speaking amongst one another, suddenly from the heavens, the great sage is passing by and he's seeing everybody seated quietly. So he's about to descend to them now to now speak to them. So he will come down and he will play his Ektar Veena. And he will chant out aloud, Hari Narayana Narayana. He comes down and he descends beautifully to that spot in Kailash Paravat. And when he comes now, he now takes his shawl and he opens it. Scripture tells us there are different parts of the scripture. In the Ganesh Puran, it says something slightly different. In Mahashiv Puran, it says something slightly different. In Markandeya Puran, it says something slightly different. However, this is what happens in Mahashiv Puran. It is said, Narad Muni took out a mango that was in his shawl. He took the mango and he now looked at Lord Shiva and Parvati Mata. And in his mind, he says, I have this beautiful fruit that I brought. With this fruit, I will offer it to you, Lord Shiva, Parvati Mata. I will offer it to both of you. And as he's about to offer it, he chants his prayer. Om Nagendra Haraya Trilochanaya Bhasmangaragaya Maheshwaraya Nityaya Shudhaya Digambaraya Tasmai Nakaraya Namaha Shivaya Tasmai Nakaraya Namaha Shivaya and he says, Om Shri Krishna Arpanam Hari Narayan. And he offers it at the feet of Lord Shiva. Lord Shiva picks up the fruit. And when he picks it up, he looks at it. He says now to the mother, he says, Maya, come, let us cut it in four pieces and let us share it. Let us give it to our children and I will have peace and you will have peace. He's about to cut it and Narada stops him and he says, Are Prabhu, wait, wait, wait. No, don't cut that fruit. You cannot cut that fruit. That fruit is a special fruit. It's a powerful fruit. Whoever partakes of that fruit will be filled with powers, spiritual powers, divine powers. They will be given the knowledge of the universe. But only one person can, can eat the fruit. You cannot give everybody. At that point, when Narada speaks these words, Lord Shiva says, well, I have two sons, Devi Mata. Who will I give it to? So Devi says, Prabhu, we are already big and full of energy. Give it to our children. I wonder if we can cut it in two at least. And Narada says, no. One. One person. We have children in our lives. Do you favor one more than the other? <laughs> Do you favor one more than the other? A saying goes like this. Many mothers have come by me already and said, Baba, my first child will always have a special spot in my heart. Is that true? Don't answer if you're children here. <laughs> answer it in your mind. We always say, you know what? I, ha I can have all the others. I can have five and ten. But you know what? That first child keeps a special spot. Why? I asked one mother one day, why? She says, because I was now learning how to become a mother. And with all the effort and the energy I put into taking care of that first child, I know how hard it is. So the example goes like this. One day, when a mother has a child, with the first child, as soon as the child goes, oh, mother will drop everything and she'll run after the child and make sure everything is okay. Second child comes, she would have gained experience from the first child. So with the second child, if the child goes, oh, they say, no, nah, don't worry, give him a five, he'll be okay. <laughs> Third child comes, fourth and fifth. Can you imagine if there are ten children by the time child number ten comes, what is going on? That child is bawling and they're saying, no, nah, don't worry, man, he'll be fine. He gonna learn to deal with it. I've met a family that has 21 children. Believe it or not. 21 children. And something I admired when I saw that family. 
the last child that was 21 she gave me the exact this example baba my biggest brother my mother them love he too much second child they have a spot for him third they love certain qualities fourth and fifth and sixth but come down to 21 they say yeah i'm a child <laughs> don't worry about she that's my child there's no connection but you know what i i looked at and i i saw at that point that something that brought to my heart that 21 or 21st child said to me that day baba you know what i'm child 21 but i could tell you i am sure i probably love my mother and father more than child number one and two and i said but how come with that treatment that you get how could you have so much of love for mother and father even then and the child said i saw the sacrifice that they did for us i saw the hard work that they put out i know that even though that they took or they took it hard on me to grow me up even then when i were to call mother and father they would be there for me in the world that we live in today it is said the world changes but there are certain things in the world that will always remain constant more than changing for the world itself people change it is up to how we see the world not so if we always see problems and situations where there are negativities we will always think and become negative but if we start working around it mentally to become a better individual then we will become better it all starts in the mind the power of the mind lord shiva looks at ganapati and kartikeya mother parvati is looking at both of them and lord shiva says well who you want to give you want to give and the mother shakes her head no mahadi we will not give any or either just one of them we need to come to a discussion or come to a conclusion and mahadev says okay here's what this is what we will do friends while we're living in this world in this day and age and time we are going through a pandemic people are becoming suffocated just staying in their house people don't know how to work around now while many of us would have been accustomed to just get up and move they're like me right they're like you also <laughs> while many of us would have been able to just get up and move many of us have to slow down now and we are just sit sitting in our home and we're just looking out and we can't even come outside and we are scared to go to the groceries and we are scared to go anywhere because we have to adjust learning to adjust is the key of life if you can't adjust then what will become of you the world will remain as it is diseases will come and it will remain for years and it will leave whenever it wants sickness and problems and inner health and negativities will come and it will remain and if we become frustrated with what we keep seeing we will never move forward mentally we need to start moving forward abhajan says it says the sun hasn't changed nor the moon the skies didn't even move it remained right there and even though the skies remain right there man is the only one who has changed but have we changed for the better or have we changed for the worst देख तेरे संसार की हालत क्या हो है भगवान कितना बदल गया इंसान कितना बदल गया इंसान सूरज न बदला चांद न बदला न बदला रे आसमान कितना बदल गया इंसान कितना बदल गया इंसान Kali Karatus 
बाते हुए मोट मसान कितना बदल गया इंसान कितना बदल गया इंसान In all scripture tonight, it is said while Kartikeya is sitting and Lord Gadapati is sitting there waiting now, somebody must get this fruit. So Lord Shiva says, okay, here's what. This is what I will do. Whoever can go around the world and come back the fastest, you will get it. Does that ring a bell now? Ganesh Puran says that Lord Ganapati stood there and instead of a mango, there was a laddu. Well, if there's a laddu, you can't beat him there. <laughs> In different scriptures, in the Markandeya Puran, it is said that a fruit was mentioned, but not what fruit, which fruit it was. But in Mahashiv Puran, it is said a mango was placed there. Whoever could go and come back the fastest, you will get it. And as we know the message at this point and everything that unfolds, it is at that point where Kartikeya, he mounts himself on his Vahana. He mounts himself on his peacock and he shoots up into the sky. But Lord Ganesha, put his hands together and he started walking around the parents your parents are your world your parents are your life your parents are everything to you worship them respect them love them give gratitude towards them appreciate them that is all they want Lord Ganapati starts to walk around and Narada was listening to the conversation and he stopped for that moment and he's wondering but what is this Mahadev, you know, said somebody need to go around the world. What is this? How come Ganapati Baba is walking around, both of you? And even Narada couldn't understand the essence and the true nature of Lord Ganapati. And then Ganesha, he put on together and he says, Great Sage, my parents are my world. And he started walking around. How long will it take you to walk around your parents? Not long. When he was finished, Lord Shiva took that fruit and he gave it to Lord Ganapati, that mango. And Lord Ganesha holds on to it. And Narad Muni, using third eye vision, he saw Kartikeya going as fast as he can around the world. And he's saying, in his mind, what would happen when Kartikeya comes back? Trouble's gonna start, right? Kartikeya is going around the world and Lord Ganapati, according to Narad Muni, this is like a smart shot. Hari Ganesha, what did you do there? You just walk around the parents and you get the fruit and Kartikeya going, man, yeah, peacock, you fly. Not knowing what will happen next. When Kartikeya made his rounds and after three rounds, he came back, tired as he was. He saw Lord Ganesha just standing. He didn't look at the mango. He saw Lord Ganesha standing there and he smiled and he says, Oh, you see, you didn't even start yet. That's to tell you how fast I was. And when Lord Ganesha lifted and you could see half of the mango bite out already. Jai Bhagawan. Trouble start. Kartikeya says, what is this? How could this happen? I never see you. You didn't even pass me on the skies. Where did you pass? Your Vahana, the Mushak, the mouse can't even go faster than my vehicle. How did you go around and come back so fast? And Lord Ganapati says, Bhai, think, my parents are my world. I walked around them. Do you cherish your parents? Do you love them? We are here tonight, and those who are here, those who are online can't see. But to those who are here, there's a mother right here rocking a little munna. <laughs> there's a mother who's, or there's a devotee is rocking this wonderful baby. I don't know if she's the mother, I'm just saying. <laughs> and while she's rocking the baby, look at the effort a mother actually takes to take care of that child. We were just talking about it. As soon as that child squeals out, that mother is there to take care. The mother is there to attend, to see what is wrong, is something wrong? And while growing up at the age of one and two and three and four and five, a child would now be persistent. You're experiencing this all right now also, right? While growing up, they're asking, but you know, Papa, why this? Mommy, why that? Daddy, why this? Mommy, how come they did that? And even though you give them the answers, they have more questions to add inside that one. You can never finish giving them the answers. They're inquisitive. They want to find out so much. And they will continue and continue. And you know what? With patience, you will answer every one of them because you don't want to yell at them. Because you want to teach them at the same time. Because you want them to learn. And you know what? A child grows up learning 
understanding. That is why today, children are the age of six and seven and eight, and they could tell you more than you know now. The internet and the iPads and, the, and everything, and even the knowledge, and there are many children I would see go by their grandparents, and they're asking, but Papa, why this? And Papa will take time. This is the time he wants to enjoy these grandchildren. He will give them all the knowledge that he can. While learning like this, children grow up with the knowledge, the care, and the love of parents. And there comes an age in their life when they reach probably what? 15, 16? Or not even so much. And that point in their life, mother can't talk to child anymore. Father can't talk to son anymore. As soon as they reach that age, nobody could tell them what is right and what is wrong. They believe that everything they know is always correct. Nobody could tell them, well, you know what? What you're doing is wrong. Even if they accept in front of you, okay, okay, it is wrong. Sometime behind your back, they still go and do the same thing. Because they believe that you may not even know what is going on. The psychology of the mind of the child, friends. Think about it. Today, a parent sacrifices for you. And when you become big, as we were to say, that same child turns around and say, I didn't ask you to do that for me. We hear it. I hear children at the age of five and six, and mother says, put that there. Didn't I tell you put that there? So what? You can put it for yourself. We hear the answer back, and we hear the abuse sometimes, and children walks out on the parents. What to do when that happens? So today, Kartike has come back from a long journey. He sees Lord Ganesha with the mango. He says, Ganapati, you didn't even try to go around the world. You just walk around, mom and dad, and you get the fruit. Mom and dad, is it what you're teaching? Is this right? I tried and I went, why didn't you call me back and say, who can walk around more than father the fastest? And he started out with the arguments. Why? Because he was hurt. How many of us don't know the situations that are taking place in our lives? Or in the lives of the people around us, our loved ones, our marriage, our relationship, our parents' lives. And we don't even know. But as soon as we see something, we jump to conclusions. We start judging. We start now thinking, condemning, and we start walking out without even knowing what is right and what is wrong. How many people today point fingers at people without even knowing anything? It is as simple as this. Simple as this. Tonight we are announcing that there is a virtual yajna in this home. And it just takes one person to come and say, well, they say virtual, nobody invited, eh? And one person might come and maybe the camera just turn and you see somebody outside there. And they say, oh, you know what? They tell we don't come, you know. But they tell he, he could have come. Stories start there. Trouble start there. The littlest of things in the world for blame and condemn, it takes place. People judge us without even knowing us. People judge your mentality without even knowing you. People pull you down without even seeing your sacrifices. People try to destroy your reputation and your character without even knowing how hard you work for it. People try in all ways possible. But remember, when you put God first, He takes care of the rest. Today, friends, Kartikeya, he's upset. He says, Mom, Dad, you favored Ganapati more than me. How is it so? And Mom and Dad said, no. We only said who could go around the world, but we didn't tell Lord Ganesh walk around us. But the concept is nice. He walked around us and he says, Mom, Dad, you are my world. So we blessed him for the knowledge that he has. He says, Mom, Dad, but you have given him the fruit of knowledge. If he's already smart, why give him a fruit you, you could have given me then? And he's arguing back and forth. Why? Why did you do this? He feels hurt because he feels as though he was deceived. He looked at Ganapati and he says, don't talk to me. I thought you were my brother. Don't talk to me. You secretly hid and you deceived me. And feeling a form of deception, feeling as though he was deceived at that point in time, he turns away, he stamps his feet, and he's about to walk away. But while he's turning around, Narada is looking at the situation. And Narada wants to speak out, but he can't. He will not get involved. What do we see as the gurus? When you see something happening, don't get involved. You only get involved when they ask you to. In your home, in your family, in your jobs, in your workplace, wherever you are, you only get involved when you are asked to. When we get involved, out of the ordinary problems come, my friends, in your life. And at that point, when you get caught up in the trouble, nobody is there to save you. What will you do? We stand up now, and the news goes everywhere. Kartikeya turns around, and he's about to walk away. And while he's walking away, he's losing his confidence in himself. He's young, he's small, and he's saying, you know what? I feel my mother, my father, my brother turn their back on me. 
I will leave. I am no good to you. If you couldn't stand up to tell me, let me get some of that fruit at least, it's best I leave. So he stands up to walk away. And while he's walking away, listen. Karakate ho bijli, barasate ho badan. Tu salam to haan, tera hume haaya. Kadam nao java tu, badhata chala ja. Kartikeya turned around, he stomped his feet and he started walking away. And he says, you know what? Since nobody liked me here to give me that fruit, I will leave. He stomped his feet and he walked out. That is why some of the scriptures say you do not see him in many of the pictures of Lord Shiva, Parvati Mata and Lord Ganapati. Because that day he walked away for a long time. He left for a period of time and while leaving, he was not there. Many people at that point wouldn't have heard of the name of Kartikeya. Time has passed. Years have passed. And he decided to come back now. He has come back strong mentally, emotionally, spiritually. 
He has come back now and he has gone to his father, Pitaji, Prabhu Shankar Golenath, Maya, Parvati. He has seen Lord Ganapati and he prostrates and he says, at this time, I've come humble, not expecting anything in turn. In life, many people have expectations, not so? We expect people should know this. We expect people should do this. We expect so many little things. We come to a yajna and maybe we expect that maybe mommy is supposed to come and actually hold the hand and walk us inside. We expect probably when it's time to eat, somebody should bring the plate for us or the leaf for us or a glass for a cup for us. We expect when we go places, certain things should be an expectation. Sometimes when it don't match up, we become disappointed. It can be in our job, waiting for a promotion. It can be in a relationship, waiting for the other party to do something or say something. Or in life in general, sometimes when we have too much of expectations, we become disappointed. Live life without thinking of the expectations. Live humble, simple. What is to come will come. What is to be will be. Mahadev said it last night when he spoke out. He says to Lord Vishnu last night, don't worry about it. You came to find me in Girija Parvat, but today I'm telling you what is to be will be. You didn't have to come and look for me. Whatever had to happen would have happened. When the Rakshasa had to die, he would have died. What we going through in our lives every single day, what is to be will be. If you pray hard and harder every day with your prayer, you can eradicate the extent of the karma that we are going through. But what has to still pass will pass. Maybe not, not with the extent according to our devotion, but what has to pass will pass. Kartikeya came. And when he came that day, he says, Prabhu, Pitaji, at this time, as I've come back, nobody needs to say anything. But Lord Shiva got up from Kailash Parvat and he walked up to his son and he walked up to him and he hugged him and he says, Child, I have missed you. Where did you go for so long? Where did you disappear to? Why did you leave? Who sent you away? Nobody sent you away. We could have sat down like a family and speak about it. Devotees, we need to sit down like a family and talk sometimes. We need to sit down like family members and talk sometimes. If we have grudges in our mind against somebody, it doesn't benefit us to now walk away and years are passing and relationships have been broken. Brothers are not talking to brothers. Sisters don't speak to one another. Family members don't speak to one another. In our job, we see somebody do something and we don't like it, we stop talking to them. You're working and you have enemies around you. In your home circle, you're walking from the kitchen to the hallway and because one brother did something, you will not speak to him again. We need to now put aside the ego and make things work. We are living in a world where life is short, time is short. Before you know it, we will all depart. Do you know how long you will live for? A pandemic came, did you expect it? How many thousands of people died? How many people that you said, you know what, we looked at the news when it now came about and said in America, look at how many people in America are dying. We know, no, what Trinidad is good, we're good. Today you're hearing somebody right down the road. Today you're hearing, you know what, I know this guy, I remember him. Recently I'm hearing so many people in which we would have went to do yajnas and pujas and close people who you speak to almost every day or every other day and it is happening. How long do we have to live for? Why not make use of what we have and the time that we have in the world? So I'll tell you this nice little secret. When you die, and you die without completions, that's a problem. What are the completions? If I had a grudge for this one and for that one and I never spoke to this one, and I die keeping these grudges within myself, you will have to come back one day to mend that part. So that means guaranteed you had to come back. <laughs> if you think, you know what, I live peaceful, man. I just never, I stopped talking to him, I stopped talking to her and that's it. I live a peaceful life, I'm good. In your conscience, you stopped and you left up space there. You will have to come back in another lifetime to repay or to now cover that spot. But if today you live with completion, the day you die, you will never have to come back. There's nothing to repay when it comes to the karmic path. If you know in your mind and in your life, there's somebody you had a grudge with, it will not kill you to say, you know what, let me pick up the phone. Hey, here's what. Everything's good, but I'm busy. I won't get to talk to you probably. I might even get to call you back. But you see what happened? Just forget about it. I forgive you, or oh, I'm sorry, or oh, you know what, please forgive me, whatever I did, I didn't know. Somebody said this, this happened, and you know what, I am sorry. You see that word completion? Try to start com doing or practicing completion in your life. Start now surrendering, giving up, saying I'm sorry, forgiving people. Start doing it, because if you die, you don't know how long you're going to live for. If you die and you haven't completed what you started in the world, you will have to come back. 
Who wants to come back in a world that is always filled with disease and illness and sickness and poverty and everything negative? Start practicing completion. When you go back home tonight, sit down and think about it. And whoever you had an, or you were an enemy with, start eradicating that now. Start counting down the numbers now and start getting rid in your mind mentally and even physically of these situations that are bringing these problems. Tonight, Bhaktas, Kartikeya comes and the father hugs him and he says, Son, come. Come, son. Sit on my lap today. And the son sits there and the father, Prabhu Shankar Bolinath, starts to speak to him. He says, My child, I have so much love for you. I would have missed you for all the years. Do you know how much I actually love you? A child today knows that a mother will always be there because as soon as something happens, Ma, sometimes the father standing right there and they say, Baba, the child never see me. Because they run straight to mommy. Probably because daddy's the stern one and he yells at us sometimes, maybe. We say, you know what, nah, don't worry. He will quarrel again. Let me go by mommy. Mommy's the easygoing one. And we neglect the fathers there sometimes. Lord Shiva says, son, today, you, are, you know in your mind that your mother will always be there to, for you and to stand up for you. But do you know how much love I have for you? I may not say it, but if anything were to happen to you, I am Mahadev, Lord of Destruction. I will burn the cosmos to ashes. That is the love the Father has. It is silent, but yet powerful. He says, son, today, you are powerful in everything. And I will teach you. I want you to learn the sacred knowledge of the universe. I want you to learn and to experience the divine knowledge. You thought that you didn't get that fruit to become knowledgeable. Today I want you to learn knowledge. And I will lead you in a direction to learn. But in order to lead you, to lead you, you must be open-minded and ready to learn what you're about to learn. And at that point, Prabhu Shankar Bolinath, he calls upon the guru of the universe. He calls upon a great saint, a great energy. He called the none other than Brahmadev, Lord Brahma. Lord Brahma, he has been summoned by Lord Shiva and he's coming to Kailash Parvat. And while in that time frame he's coming, Lord Shiva speaks to his son and he says, Child, I will be there as the backbone in your life to always strengthen you and support you. Beautiful bhajan tonight about all fathers we sing. Tujhe suraj kaho yaha chanda Tujhe deepa kaho ya tara mera naam kare garoshan jag mein mera raj dulara everybody bol Think 
of your father tonight, my friends. Take a moment, close your eyes, and think of your father. Whether he's alive or he's not alive, say a prayer. Maybe you never understood how much love your father had for you. Maybe you do. But say a prayer and say, Lord, strengthen my father. Give him health and strength if he's alive. And if he's not alive, Lord, maybe I took him for granted. But say sorry and say, Lord, bless his soul wherever he is. see them regularly take up the phone and give them a call and specifically ask for your father if he's alive ask for your father and simply tell him nothing big dad are you okay my mind ran on you and I just called to see if you're fine I was thinking about you some people might be ashamed to say I miss you dad some big boys might say you know what I'm ashamed to say daddy I love you some people might be ashamed, but you know what? Simply say, Dad, I was just thinking about you, and I called to see if you're okay. Do you need anything? Take a moment to find a bonding moment with your father before it's too late. Life is short. Take a moment, and if you're living with them, then tonight or tomorrow, or don't let time fly. Don't let time pass you by. Sit down if it's for five minutes and say, Dad, can you just come sit with me? It feels amazing. Dad, just sit with me. I'm just calling you to sit, just to sit with me. I don't have anything to say. I don't have anything to give you. Just sit and just create that energy. That energy and the bond of the father and the child. You don't know that while the mother was rocking the child day and night, father was also there waiting. To, if, to, if he had to do something, he was ready to do it. He was there to help and to be a part. And maybe he didn't have to do anything, but his love, dedication, persistence, and energy has been there and will always be there towards his children. Today, take it upon yourself. And while we know how short time is, take a moment to bond with your father. And if your father is not alive and you know, never given the opportunity, then feel it within. Sit by the Murti of Bhagwan Krishna, Shambhu Bolinath, and think of your father and say, Dad, wherever you are, I miss you and I'm just thinking about you. And I'm sending my prayer and my love towards you. That moment of bonding was there where Kartikeya sat down. After so many years, he came back and he sat down. And father held on to him and he hugged him tight. And he says, son, I missed you. Don't you miss your children? 
when they leave and they go to school and come back or when they leave to go out and to return you sit down and you question i wonder what time they come back i want know how long they'll take i wonder if they're okay they might be big but yet the parent thinks kartikeya sits and he's feeling a love and he feels contented and there brahmadev is coming now and while brahmadev comes lord shiva says my child was deprived of that fruit of divine knowledge he is smart but brahmadev can you take him and teach him the energies of the universe kartikeya i want to listen you will go with brahmadev today and he will teach you everything that you need to learn so you go kartikeya comes down and he's going but he's little particular about brahmadev being his teacher because at the same time he believes that he has learned so much and he has an amount of knowledge and in order for the teacher to be able to teach him he feels in his mind that the teacher must know more than him so he starts to ask the question if you have a teacher and you're asking questions and you're not getting the answers how confident will you feel to ask more so he looks at brahmadev and brahmadev says come child come om brahmane namaha and he's simply chanting Om Brahmane Namaha Om Brahmane Namaha Om Brahmane Namaha And Kartikeya is walking and he's seeing him just reciting this mantra and he turns and he says Om Brahmane Namaha Brahmane Brahma yo Brahma right and he turns and he says yes child come and he continues om brahmane namaha are brahma ji gurudev you are my teacher now can i ask what you are saying i am saying a mantra om brahmane namaha okay okay om brahmane so brahmane is you what is the om and lord brahma stop for a moment sometimes we are singing and we don't know what we are singing sometimes we are reading something and we don't even know what we are reading we try to analyze from what we know best and we just give it up and if somebody might ask us we may try to think of something and say yeah i think it i think this is what it is but lord brahma stops at that point to understand what is om the om is that universal symbol it is one that is connected to lord ganapati kartikeya had an idea because he felt the connection with the cosmos alongside his brother ganapati brahmadev why are you chanting om what is the om and brahmadev stood there and he says well child The Om is simply the sound of the universe, and he stopped. Okay, let's chant now. And he says, No, 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 no. Wait. If you're going to be my teacher, I don't just want to hear the sound of the universe. What does it mean? What is it? What what sound? What will it do if I chant Om? Tell me more. Just like the child inquisitive, I want to find out more. And while he's asking, Brahmadev now finds it difficult to pull the words together to tell him. He says son I will teach you but before you learn om before you learn the omkar start learning the syllables let me start teaching you the alphabet first and let's go to the syllables and the consonants and so on I will teach you om and he says no 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 I know the alphabet <laughs> I didn't come to learn the alphabet I know the alphabet and I know the consonants and I know the syllables I need to know what is that om that you're saying let's start with this the first thing you said when I met you was om brahmane namaha what is that and Lord Brahma pauses for a moment and he says child listen let's learn the alphabet please shant ho jayna and he says no if you want to be my teacher you have to start answering my questions and he turned away to walk away and while he's walking away brahmadev says you know what come let's go back by your father we will deal with this when we get there so he's going back to kailash parvat and while they're walking back listen ओम नाम प्यारा है 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 माता पिता भाई बंधु सका वो हमारा है माता पिता भाई बंधु सका वो हमारा है ओम नाम प्यारा है डाले डाले 
Mata, Pita, Bhai, Bhandu, Sakha. The Om symbolizes your mother, your father, your brother, your sister, your friend, the people around you. When you say Om, that vibration, that sound, it's to gather everybody. People may not know a mantra, but when they hear Om, everybody could start up here. Om with something. We don't know where's the rest, but yeah, Baba, Om. Every prayer, every mantra starts with that Om card. It connects the family. It connects, it creates a union with the entire family, the generation and the lineage. Om Kaar Bindu Sanyuktam, that most powerful mantra in itself, Om Kaar. Prithvi Pahar Nari Nali Kya Banaya Hai, Rang Dhar Pool Bina Haat Ke Kilaya Hai, Leta Hai Prakash Yuse Surya Chandra Dara Hai, Leta Hai Prakash Yuse Surya Chandra Dara Hai, The brother, the sister, the friends, the people around us are connected with Omkar. Leta hai parkaryo se Surya Chandra Tara hai. The stars, Bhagwan Surya, the moon, the cosmos, the universe, it revels in Omkar. It is not just a sound. It is a connection with everything in the cosmos in itself. It says, my friends, that by chanting Omkar, you create peace and unity. The world, the Western world, they haven't even understood what is Omkar. But everybody, no matter skin and color and whoever we are, we know to say Om. We can sit to do yoga. We can sit to meditate. We don't know what to do. But you start by saying Om. It is a powerful syllable, my friends. Rishi Muni Yogi Sare Use He Jata Hai Gita Prabhu Bhakti Ke Jum Jum Gate Hai Tota Mene Koya Ne Bhi Usse Ko Pukara Hai Tota Mene Koya Ne Bhi Usse Ko Pukara Hai is more than just the word in itself. It goes beyond. It connects universes together. It connects the cosmos together. It connects the rishis and the munis and the yogis and everybody together. Omkar. Today, bhaktas, it is said, Kartikeya stomped his feet and he started walking. Gurudev, you can't teach me anything. Why will I call you Guru? You are Brahmadev, created the universe and you don't even know what is Om. Why should I sit and learn from you? <laughs> He's questioning the God of the universe, the creator. He walked away and there he started climbing Kailash Paravat and he reaches now a point where he goes and he sees mother, Hare Maya, where is Pitaji? She says, go further. He's sitting at the top of Kailash. And he goes there and he says, Pitaji, what kind of guru did you put me on to? We expect that when the guru teaches or he speaks, we learn something, not so? What kind of guru have you brought us to where we, he's speaking and doesn't even know what he's saying? How can I learn from him? He is Brahmadev. Pitaji, what can I learn from him? He can learn from me. And Lord Shiva says, child, is that ego? Shant ho jai. Don't speak like that in front of Brahmadev. He is creator. Do you know what is Om? He says, yes, I know what is Om. Tell me what is Om then. So at that point, Kartikeya, he looks at mother. He turns around. He sees the Ganas, they are standing there. He sees many people standing there. And he says, I will tell you. The mother, my friends, she goes to call Lord Ganapati. Hari Ganesha, I am scared that there might be some form of embarrassment here. 
Ganapati, you are remove up obstacles. Come, come, you need to sort this out. Kartikeya is becoming enraged and before problems come and before Brahmadev walks away and so on. Come, you will need to help us. Parvati Mata has gone for Lord Ganapati. Alvalshi has gone. Kartikeya, he says, Pitaji, Lord Shiva, let me tell you. I can tell you what is Om. And there he says, let me tell you. Lord Shiva says, if you're going to tell me something, it means you know better than Brahmadev. So that means you're going to teach me something, right? And if you know well and you're going to teach me, don't worry. I will not be like you. I'll be a simple student. So Lord Shiva says, come. And he places him on his lap. When he sits on the lap of Lord Shiva, he starts to whisper in the air of Prabhu Shankar Gulenath. And while he's whispering in the air, Lord Shiva is listening. He puts his hands together. When you're doing prayers and you're doing puja and worship, you're supposed to sit down how? How do you sit in Yagya? How do you sit in Yajna? Some people prop up the chin. Some people sit tall and proud. When you sit to listen to the messages of God, you put your hands together. Humility, humble. Lord, teach me. I'm waiting for the knowledge. When you're doing a puja in your home and you sit there while the pandit is still preparing, you put the hands together. Teach me, Lord. I am humble and simple. Lord Shiva Mahadev put his hands together and his son is whispering what is Omkar in the air of Lord Shiva. And while he's whispering, the Omkar and the energy, suddenly the mother comes back with Lord Ganapati, Parvati Mata. And when she comes back, at that point she sees Kartikeya sitting on the lap of Mahadev and Mahadev's hands are folded together in Pranam. And while he's whispering, the mother looks and she sees a beautiful image a beautiful picture of the sun on the lap of Lord Shiva. And he's whispering in the air while Lord Shiva listens. And she says, child, look at you. You're growing up too fast. You're growing up so quickly. You are sitting to teach your father something now. You are like the guru and he's like the god child. You are like the yogi and he's like the god child. You are like the swami and he's like the shishya. She says, you know what? The world will know you today. You will be known as Kartikeya. You will be known as Kanda. You will be known as Marugan. But today, as you are sitting on the lap of your father, like the Swami that is teaching him, he is Bholenata. Today, I will name you Swaminata. While I will whisper at the air of my child Ganapati, you whisper in the air of Mahadev. And the world today will worship you as Swaminata. Swaminata. Sachidananda Jai Guru Nata Sachidananda Swami Nata Sachidananda Jai Guru Nata Sachidananda I'm not afraid. 
So while Swami Nata, Kartikeya, Skanda, Marugan, while he will be the presiding deity of this year, I think we could say that is the presiding song of the year too, right? <laughs> that beautiful chant to Swami Nata. Today, my friends, when Kartikeya spoke in the air of Lord Shiva, he realized that the energy of Kartikeya is filled with so much of knowledge that the world won't understand. Today, to those who don't know, if you do worship to Kartikeya, so people do puja for all the other gods, Lord Ganapati, Durga Devi Maya, Prabhu Shankar Bhurinath, to those who worship Lord Kartikeya, it is said you will not only receive blessings like the deities bless you, but you will be relieved from all the negative effects of the Grahas planetary system. You will be relieved from any form of magnetic and charismatic personality that may be negative in the world you will have a positive and a divine personality. It is said to those who wish to have spiritual upliftment, we are praying and we want to feel the vibes and feel the energy and feel the aura. No matter how much you pray, you get set back. You pray to Kartikeya and he will help you. But at the same time, while this year will be ruled by Kartikeya, Kartikeya sits on the peacock and he goes everywhere. The vehicle, the peacock, is connected to Kartikeya. When you see the peacock, that bird, what do you want to see? You want to see the feathers open. And when you see the feathers open, you want to see the coloration of the feathers like they're shaking. And you want to see like, wow. When you see the eye of the peacock and you see everything else, you see something dazzling. The coloration is there. Just like that, this year has been said in the scripture as well. It has been said that when Kartikeya rules, just like the coloration, the year will be filled with people who are dazzling you. Remember, not everything that glitters is gold. So while Kartikeya will rule for this year, in other words, be careful, people will fool you up. Be careful, people will outsmart you. Be careful, people will show the coloration and try to be so nice, but in turn, they may not like you. Just be careful. Do not have the expectations of the world. It is said when Kartikeya passes, he will bring strength and motivation to the people. He will, just like in his life, he walked away from the family, but he came back. It is said in this year, people will have arguments and you will see family breaking up. You will see people walking out in the home. You will see young children standing up and saying, you know what, I don't want to be here. I'm leaving and they will walk away. You will see arguments and fights and tension in a home. You will see problems where the home is being split. What do you do when the troubles of this world befall us? What do you do for this year? Pray to Kartikeya. 
worship Kartikeya. Get a murti. Chant. Very simple chant. You don't know the chants of all his names and forms. Subramanyam Subramanyam Sanmukhanata Subramanyam 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 Sanmukhanata Subramanyam Shanmukha, the one with the six faces who have taken birth from the energies of the six devis. So understand how important Kartikeya is. Tonight we would have touched on the energy of Kartikeya and as we have understood one of the essence of Kartikeya, we end our message tonight. But tomorrow night we'll continue once more with the essence of Shikartikeya. Shivrindavan Bihari Lala ki jai Umapati Mahadeva ki jai. At this time now, let us all stand as we join in beautiful final arti. Brahma Vishnu Sadashiva Ardange Dhara Brahma Vishnu Sadashiva Ardange Dhara Jai Shiva Om Kara Baba Har Shiva Om Kara
बंधुष सखा तमेव विद्या द्रविणमेव मम देवेव मम देवेव एक बार क्षमा कर साई मेरे बाबा श्री सत्य साई सुषमापति महादेव की जय वृंदावन में हरिलाल की जय पवन सुत हनुमान की जय श्री सत्य सनातन धर्म की जय जय सीताराम आसने जी दर सौतिकार सीज मे द ब्लेसिंग ऑफ द डिवाइन लॉर्ड बी विद ईच एंड एवरी वन एज वी कंक्लूड